to be proud of our country, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's important to recognise that bad things were done, you know. Mm. Yeah. And and the excuse that everyone was doing it at the time isn't a valid one, quite honestly, you know. Like, everyone was doing it. Yeah. Spain, Portugal, France, Holland. Holland they, they all had colonies. They all had empires. Yeah. We were just the most successful at it. Um, uh, and that may, that comes with some baggage, obviously. Alongside that, though, there are there are good things, and it's important to see both sides of it. However, no matter how bad the baggage was, for example, we, no one would blame a German living today for the atrocities that were caused by the Third Reich. Exactly. Right? Yeah. No one's gonna. No one would dream of doing that. Um, but so so that you got to apply that. Like, I don't think there's many positive benefits of the Nazi regime for the few years that they were in power. There, there probably are some, you know. Aside from, like, technological advances. Te- yeah, help you making know, military the autobahn advances. bigger and all this kind of stuff and, and creating, yeah, technical, technological advances for sure. VW, Hugo Boss getting loads of money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> that's, anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, but... Uh, you, you wouldn't, like I say, you wouldn't tar every German today yeah. with a brush that was used from 1940. You no know. way. So when, when people are celebrating Oktoberfest yeah. later this month, you're not going to look around and go, yeah. oh, this is a bit close to the bone. Yes. They were perpetrators of the Holocaust. Exactly, because yeah. they're not. Because no. they're, they're, this nation that's alive now, these mm. people weren't alive. Exactly. They were nothing to do with that. They're just... People living in Germany now, and they're proud of being German, and yeah, all the things that come with it. So. Exactly, and it's it's you you can't judge people by the morality of today. You can't judge people in history by the morality of today. And I feel like, as a country, uh, almost as a society, we are just just sort of allowing people to sort of. Um, just sort of well disrespect our, our history and our <laughs> culture, and it's almost been accepted by the majority it seems like the majority I'm, I'm hopefully hopefully not but if you look at the media and stuff it does seem like the majority mm. and um i don't think it is the majority i yeah, think like I all things think it's like yeah it's what people say on twitter isn't it mm. or you know or in the media it's like and i guess because we're in a sort of creative industry um it's the sort of people that on the whole are in that industry are very Usually quite left leaning. Not yeah. not everyone, but just seems like the the two sort of go a bit hand in hand. Yeah. So we see that quite a bit, I guess. But we definitely do. Yeah. But yeah, I think, like I say, in the media as well, it's pretty pretty prevalent in just. And I think that can be traced back to universities have been quite left leaning for a long time. Yep. And I think it's quite easy to sort of see the link of highly educated people in um, society now that are sort of running universities, running papers, running businesses, Mm -hmm. um, or maybe not running them, but certainly higher up in them, are from that ilk and from from a relatively left-leaning background where they've grown up. However, the the sort of tried and trusted sort of method of as you get older, you get more conservative seems to always work like yeah. it's, really, it's quite interesting like <laughs> big time as people get older they tend to be a little bit more conservative a little bit less li- um liberal with their views certainly socially maybe not economically and stuff i think you sort of pretty relatively hard wired into that when you learn about that stuff as a, at a younger age but um and that sort of is why it's keeping the balance i feel like it's yeah. um but you know you've got a lot of young people in relatively high positions of power at the moment um and yeah, they tend to have very strong opinions on things that um, are more left leaning. Yeah, and that's how we're seeing the ripple effects of that at the moment. The only problem with that is that the majority of people that um, vote aren't the same as them. No. <laughs> so like, people can be very shouty on Twitter or mm-hmm. wherever it is, and then when it comes to election day or referendum day or whatever it is, all their followers are like at uni Mm -hmm. or at the pub or whatever and forget or don't care enough Mm. (laughs) but everyone who's been disagreeing with them watching the news turns up to the vote and yeah and then the next day everyone's like what yeah what i don't get it yeah (laughs) which is why you see it all the time where you 
you, it's very rare you'll see a conservative advert saying sign up and vote. Yeah. What you will see is a lot of left leaning uh, politicians and celebrities and stuff saying sign up and vote because they know that it's registered again, to vote. Just, people don't do it. Yeah. People that don't that maybe they'll be really vocal um, on social media, but it's crazy to me. But like they're so adamant that they're right, but that they don't even vote. It's yeah, it blows my mind. But um, mm. you know, the last few major elections in America and the UK has shown that yeah, people don't vote even after the massive run up to these elections. Like mm. the most uh, prominent example is this recent. Uh, Corbyn v Boris mm. election and that was like it couldn't have been more publicised right it couldn't have been more all over social media mm. all the like all the media outlets are like just thumping this agenda of like get out vote young person vote mm. please vote yeah but they uh, they just didn't they can't have no. they, they can't have or they didn't vote in the way that people wanted them to vote yeah which was just it's just interesting. Like I can't, I can't see another election being more aimed at young people. Mm. So, like, if if they didn't vote in that election, they're never going to vote. Mm. Surely, they're not. No, because what, what, like, what does it take to get mm. young people to vote? This is the thing. Like, th- this is where the argument comes. So, there's a massive debate in America at the moment about sort of postal voting and trying to make it. The Democrats want tend to make it easier to vote, and the Conservatives' argument to that is. Listen, it's really not that hard to vote. Yeah. If you're switched on and you actually care about the election, you'll do the one form that you need to fill out early enough to vote, basically. That's their argument. Yeah. That's the easiest and, thing in the world. Yeah. Fill a form out in advance, go down on the day. And I think the worry is if you give everyone, if you basically say, let's say you turn up on election day, you knock on someone's door and you say, who would you like to vote for? They've had not had to do any research. They've not had to think about it themselves at all. Yeah. And the vote is sort of just handed to them. So they've not had to do any... There's no personal responsibility on them to do any sort of homework mm. and really think about their decision. They're going to instantly vote with their gut. They're going to go with what someone else has told them, whatever. And maybe there's an argument that that's good because more people are voting. I tend to think that uh, I would rather people vote informed and decide on their own who they're going to vote for and have at least reasons why. So even if it's just a case of the barri- barrier to entry is just having to fill a form in time, when you can fill it out years in advance yeah. or months in advance or weeks in advance and still get it in in time. There know? doesn't have to be an election looming, no. right? No, exactly. To register to no, vote. No, you just to register to vote. And yeah. You get your ballot card through, right? Yeah. So it's... Um, so that's what I mean. So I've, I'm on the sort of more conservative side there. Like, you shouldn't just hand it out and just done you're done you're good to go and people will just sort of haphazardly vote and not really have any thought process behind it I feel like then we should encourage people to at least have thought about it and if they have to fill a form out put their address down and that kind of stuff which isn't hard you (laughs) think at least they put some thought into the whole election process and they maybe have an idea of who they want to vote for for a specific reason and not just because someone told them to vote for this person it's very interesting and it's immediately made me rethink one of my views. Wow. Um, because I've always found it very, very interesting that uh, the rest of the Western world doesn't enforce voting like Australia does. Okay. Because in Australia, it's like you have to vote, otherwise you get fined, basically. Really? You get like a $100 fine or something like that. Wow, I didn't It's know a that. compulsory thing, yeah. So it means that the turnout is obviously considerably higher. Sure. Um, and my uh, previous view has been like, well, that's the best system in the world. Mm. Just get everyone to vote, make it a law, and if they don't, you just get more money in tax, like tax revenue, fine mm. revenue, basically. And I thought, well, why wouldn't everyone do that? Mm. But your point then about like if you make it compulsory, mm. it's just like it popping up on Netflix before you open Netflix. And it's like, who do you want to vote for, left or right? And then someone mm. just goes. Oh, I don't know, right, yeah. oh, I don't know, left or whatever. Yeah. And they just click it. It's out of the way to avoid the fine. Sure. It's like immediately then you've got a huge section of society uh, voting for somebody just to get it out of their way, mm-hmm. just to mean that they're not paying a fine or something. So, um, so yeah, that's in- an yeah. interesting point. Oh, wow. Because yeah. now maybe it's 
and not a good idea. Even though sometimes turnouts can be low, and it's like you know we get dejected when it's like sixty two percent turned out to vote mm. last year. It's like oh, that's really dejecting that you know so few people did. But it's like actually they're the people that cared mm-hmm. and that wanted to make a difference. Yeah, and then they're the only people that matter. As long as you're not stopping people from voting. That's, exactly. That's the important thing. Yes. And that's this is the another thing as well. I don't like the idea of forcing the population to do anything. Even with even when we talk about fines because I know like a $100 fine isn't probably a huge amount of money. I don't know what the conversion rate is with Australian dollars, but I think it's about 60 quid. Sure. Okay. So not a, not a crazy amount of money like a parking fine or yeah, a, yeah. A traffic stop whatever. So it's not much, but the, the thing is, when you when you have a government sort of dictating to you what you should do, even if it's only enforced with a small fine, what happens if you don't pay the fine? Mm. You get a bigger one, probably, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, I and you so. don't pay that one. Magistrates court. Magistrates court. Cool. You don't pay that. Bailiffs come. You don't let the bailiffs in. Yeah. You know, it escalates pretty rapidly over a, over a while, I'm sure, but you end up going to jail effectively. The state has now. Um, unless there are specific laws saying that it's a fifty, hundred dollar fine, but will not take it any further or something, which seems sort of counterproductive to me. I don't know. Maybe it's not, but you see, like any of these governments telling people what to do with and enforcing it with fines. For example, staying at home, not going to work, not allowing to, you to have a wedding, like we're having seeing at the moment. Yeah, which is enforced by a fine. It's on the surface, it seems. Sure, like yeah fine that doesn't seem like a big deal but it gets very sinister mm, if you, as soon as you don't quickly. pay that f- fine it gets very sinister very quickly and it's um, it's a government telling you what to do and that's not what democracy is supposed to be yeah um, even if it means having the freedom not to vote in the democracy that you're taking part in so yeah, yeah. I'm not a massive fan of them forcing people I, I get I totally get the sentiment behind it though and it would be nice if everyone voted and had a, like a really good think about it and like you know what yeah I think it doesn't have to be like you don't have to have a political degree or have done years of research into it just even just looking at a party and think you know what yeah Green Party sure I'm sure a lot of people would vote Green they care about the environment sure I, I want them mm. it, it, even that sort of basic level of understanding of the party and sort of the economic and uh, political agenda that they've got that would be better than just someone randomly ticking it just to avoid a fine yeah. definitely but be wary of fines that's what I would say I am anyway yeah. it always scares me a little bit when any sort of fine like that gets introduced um, yeah. even if it's just very innocent on the surface mm. interesting mm. watch this space <laughs> <laughs> we should do that we should just go to a public park and just in a group of seven yeah, <laughs> I just wait until you just never pay. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. We're recording on behalf of the Blokes Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any? Sure, I'll I'll get in the van. All right, <laughs> all right. Don't push me. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, sports time, baby. Woo! Oh yeah, sports are back in a big way. Yes, both footballs. Yeah, both I, footballs are back. I've been having a good time. Like I've been getting into it quite a lot, actually, more than I've ever done. With football, it's a bit like um, soccer football. Yeah, yeah. Premiership. We'll call it Premiership. Let's call it Premiership NFL. and NFL. Yeah. Because I feel like calling it soccer is a little bit like sacrilege. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> considering we're in London. <laughs> um, I've had a great time. I've got fantasy leagues for both sports. Sweet. Which is forcing me to keep on top of players that aren't involved with just Man United. Ah, cool. Or just Seahawks, which That's is something quite I fun. need to do. It's worth doing. I've never done it before. Because it instantly shows you the... the so you, you're obviously picking good players from a variety of teams and then it shows you the, each team's score, shows you how well each player did and it sort of gives you a little bit of an overview of, of the league as a whole. Right. Whereas I tend to be of much more... I love watching the games but it's I sometimes struggle watching a game that I have no stake in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't care what team wins. Yeah. Doesn't matter. If one of them winning involves my team sort of getting through or something like in the playoffs in or or working toward the playoffs in the NFL yeah. that's huge because you know oh I need that team to lose because if they lose I get the, we get the wild card seat and we can get into the playoffs or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, 
So that's big. But just a normal game, I've got no stakes in. I struggle sometimes. But having that fantasy league, you know, I've got Hoi Ming Sun on one of them. And, <laughs> oh, he's doing well today. Getting the points in, baby. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, so, so is it like... Um, it can't be like... A- 